All right. So here's a review. This is for our second part of our test on rotational motion. This is going to be primarily over kinematics and torque. All your kinematics equations are given right here. We've got variables we need to know. A delta theta, that's angular displacement. Omega is going to be angular velocity. You've got a final and an initial. You've got alpha, which is angular acceleration. We've got delta t and anything else. Yep, that's all of them. Cool. Other than that, we know we got to use our torque is either RF cosine theta or RF sine theta. We are picking the side that is perpendicular on those torque problems. So I will give you on the test one or two questions like this where I'm just giving you the variables and given this and we'll solve for the other two things in the table. So with, I just chunked it instead of going straight to a word problem. Hey, I'm going to give it to you. Make sure you know how to pick the equations. So you want to do the third one? Sure. Here we go. So I'll do one of these. I'll do one or two of the word problems, and we'll just carry on like that. So here, we'll look at this third question. We're given the omega initial is moving at 650 RPMs, the final zero, so it's coming to a stop, and it takes a time of 33 seconds to do that. So first thing I need to do is I need to go from RPMs to radians per second is my base unit. So I'm going to take this number, the 650, and I'm going to times it by a revolution is... 2 pi, and a minute is 60 seconds. So we're going to multiply 650 by 2 pi over 60, and that should be 68.1 radians per second. 68.1 radians per second. So first question, what is the angular acceleration? And just so I don't have to keep flipping, I don't know if you get the door. I am missing alpha. I am missing delta theta. I want to get angular acceleration, so I'm going to pick the equation that is missing delta theta. That's this top one. So that's what I'm going to use. Omega final equals omega initial plus alpha times t. Okay, and I don't care if you write t or delta t. It doesn't matter to me at all. Okay, we're going to solve this for alpha. So I would have omega f minus omega i divided by t equals alpha. So we'll get 0 minus 68.1 over 33. We get negative 2.06 radians per second squared. What does the negative there mean? It's not the, it has to do with direction, but what it really means is this object is slowing down. That's what that negative means. It's slowing down. Okay. So now we've got that. We've got this is negative 2.06. Are we missing anything now? Just delta theta, right? So all I have to do is pick any equation that has delta theta and I can solve it. So you can use this one or this one, whichever one you think is easier. You could also do this one and solve it for delta theta. But why do algebra if you don't have to? I'm just going to pick this first one. Plug in. Delta theta equals omega initial times t plus one-half alpha t squared. 68.1 times 33 plus one-half negative 2.06 times 33 squared and I get 1100 and I'm just going to call it 26 radians that would be your answer. Now, sometimes I'll ask an additional step, which is how many revolutions did it turn? If I want to go from radians to revolutions, what do we know about a revolution? It is 2 pi. So I'm just going to take this, divide by 2 pi. Okay. 
when I do that, if I'm just pressing divide, I need to do parenthesis 2 pi. Okay, just to show you, that's the right answer. 179.2 revolutions. 179.2 revs or rotations. Okay, if I did not plug that in, if I didn't put parentheses here, I don't get that same number. Why? Because it's going to divide by 2 and then multiply that number by pi. It's the same thing. So you can see it's 26, divide by 2, and then multiplying by pi. That's the same thing. That's what your calculator is doing. Yeah. Okay. What's the other option you could do to make sure you don't mess up and don't have to use parentheses? Alpha y equals. Alpha y equals, I can do 1126 over 2 pi, and then I don't have to worry about the parentheses because it divides by that whole number on the bottom, the whole denominator. Okay, so, yeah. Any questions there? Okay. Should I do one or two? Two? Sure. A gear with an initial angular velocity of 9,000 RPM slows down with an angular acceleration of 250 radians per second squared. If its angular displacement was negative 4, 4 million radians, what was the gear's final angular velocity? How long did it take to achieve? Every time you, you read, that sounds like a lot, right? What we have to do, read it once, and then as we read through again, let's figure out what variables we know what we're given. So initial angular velocity, what's that? It is omega i. We're given 9,000 RPMs. And as soon as I see RPMs, what do I got to do? 2 pi divided by 60. 9,000 times 2 pi divided by 60. I get 942.5, and that's radians per second now, okay? Next, I got slows down, slows down with an angular acceleration of 250 radians per second. So that's going to be our alpha. We don't have omega final yet. But it says slows down. What does that mean? Negative acceleration. So we're going to be negative 250. Angular displacement, what's that? Delta theta. Hold on. So I'm just going to fit that right here where I can. Negative 4 million. It's in radians. Do I have to convert that? Nope, that's the base unit. Okay. So what? Final angular velocity. So what do I not have listed here? Delta t. So I'm going to choose the equation that's missing delta t right here this one and I want to solve it for the final. So I've got omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. So I'm solving for omega final. How do I get rid of squared? I'm just square rooting that other side. So we're going to get the square root of 942.5 squared plus 2 times negative 250 times negative 4 million. We get a really big number. That's radians per second. How long did it take to achieve this? So how long would it be solving for? 
We want t. Now we have everything else, so we can pick any equation with t and solve. Which one looks easiest to solve? I'd say the top one. That's what I would do. So I would use this top equation. We're going to get t equals omega final minus omega initial over alpha. Okay. Now I, I should ask a, a follow-up to this. When you take the square root of something, is it positive or negative? It could be either or, so we've got to think about it. Okay, if it's going 942, so it's got a positive velocity and a negative acceleration, is it ever going to reach 44,000 positive? No, so this needs to be a negative. Okay, so that was a little tricky there. So that is a negative 44,000. Okay, I'll make sure on the test the numbers are more reasonable than this. And make a little more sense but it's just a gear so there's probably a gear that does this okay so we're gonna plug in Omega final is negative 44 thousand seven hundred and thirty one minus nine hundred and forty two point five over negative 250 Yep, about 183 seconds. Okay. Does this feel just like linear kinematics that we did at the beginning of the year? It's still that same exact skill set, right? What's different? The units. And just making sure we have a couple different types of conversions, right? That RPM to radians per second, everybody's good with that times 2 pi over 60 now. Everybody gets that? So what if it said revolutions per second? Because sometimes it'll give you that. You just multiply by 2 pi. 2 pi. Why don't we divide by 60? Because it's already in seconds. When it's in minutes, that's when you got to do that. Okay. Let's go through this. We got a deep sea fisherman hooks a big fish that swims away from the boat, pulling the fishing line from his fishing reel. The whole system is initially at rest. So I'm going to underline that initially at rest. And the fishing line unwinds from a wheel with a radius of 4.5 centimeters from axis of rotation. The reel is given an angular acceleration of 110 radians per second for two seconds. So what is the final angular velocity? What did you say? We're missing time. Yes, or that's time. Thank you. So we've got initially at rest means omega i is zero. We've got alpha is 110 radians per second squared. We've got time is two seconds. So we don't have delta theta yet. And we don't have omega final, but we want it. We do have a radius, but we don't have to use that with the kinematics type question. So I want omega final. I don't have delta theta, so I'm going to use first one right there. It's already solved for us. Great. No algebra. Omega final equals omega initial plus alpha times t, or 0 plus 110 times 2, which is 220. And then it's radians per second. Nice easy one. Okay. At what speed is the fishing line leaving the reel after two seconds has elapsed or after two seconds elapses? So speed, that means we want the V. V is just uh, R times omega. So what is our R going to be? So we got 4.5 centimeters. So we're going to take 4.5 and cent. How many cents in a dollar? 100. 100. We're dividing by 100. So we got 0 0.045 times 
times 220 radians. Nine point nine meters per second. That seems pretty reasonable. How many revolutions does the reel make? So we want revolutions. What do we what variable helps us get revolutions? Huh? So out of these, what have we not solved for yet? Delta theta, that's going to be our angular displacement. That'll tell me, us how many radians it turned, and then we can go from radians to revolutions. So anytime it wants revolutions, it's really going, okay, what's delta theta? Now, since we've got all the other variables, again, we can use either equation for it. This one tends to be easier. So we're going to do delta theta equals omega initial times t plus one half alpha t squared. What was my initial velocity? So what happens there? Cancel. So really I just get 1 half, 110 times 2 squared. Two twenty radians. But is that my answer? Is that how many revolutions? Nope. It doesn't go around two hundred and twenty times. We gotta divide by two pi. Thirty five. How many meters of fishing line come off the reel at this time? Anybody know what we're solving for here? What that means? How many? Does it make, make sense, right? The fish is getting away how much line came off. So what is that measured in? That should be measured in meters. So what things do we know that are measured in meters? Yeah, arc length. That's how far it moved, right? So all we have to do is take our delta theta in radians times radius. So S equals R delta theta. 0 0.045. And we had gotten for our radians 220. And 9.9. .9. Now it just so happens that this is the same number as this. That's just a coincidence. Why did that happen? Because it two seconds. Okay, it got to this speed after two seconds, right? So it would mean the average speed was 4.5 or half of that number for one sec or for two seconds. It just mathematically works out that way. It's generally not going to be the same number for those two if I ever ask you that question again. If it's anything other than two seconds, they would be different numbers. You want me to do number four with you too? Sure. I figured. Number four. Large freight trains accelerates very slowly. Suppose one such train accelerates from rest, giving its 0.35 meter radius wheels an angular acceleration of 0.25 radians per second squared. After the wheels have made 200 revolutions, we're assuming there's no slippage, and that's always going to be the assumption here. How far is the train moved down the track, and what are the final angular velocity of the wheels and the linear velocity of the train? Go ahead and start this, so list what you're given and see if you can get some of this on your own.
Uh, Bridger, what's one thing we're given? Um, the uh, velocity initial. Yeah. Omega i is what? Zero, because it says rest. Okay. Uh, Rylan, what's something we're given? Angular acceleration. Angular acceleration. So alpha, 0 0.25. So we got that. Uh, what's something else we're given? Radius. So r is 0 0.35. It's already in meters. Good. And what's the last thing we're given? Somebody else. Revolutions. Revolutions. And what variable is that going to be? Change in theta. Change in theta. Good. So delta theta equals 200 revolutions. And what do we want to do with that to get it into something useful? Times 2 pi. So times and by 2 pi. We divide by 2 pi when we go back to revolutions. Because, you know, one revolution is 2 pi. So we're going to take 200 divided by 2 pi. Thank you. It is okay. One thousand two hundred. We'll call it fifty-seven. And that's in radians now. Okay, so it's everything we were given, right? Didn't miss anything. How far has the train moved down the track? So again, how far? What are we solving for? Huh? What do we do here? How many meters? How far? How far? We're solving for S. So S equals R delta theta. We got both of those, right? 0 0.35 times 1257. So we'll call that 440. Y'all go with that? 440 meters. What are the final angular velocity of the wheels and the linear velocity of the train? So we're basically going to find this first. This is omega final. And then we'll change that to V. So I know omega initial. And I know alpha. And I know delta theta. So what am I missing here? What do we not list? We don't have t. So I'm going to pick the equation missing t. Huh? Oh, okay. Missing delta t. So we're going to use this one right here. Omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. How do we get rid of that squared? Square root. So initial is actually zero, so that'll cancel. So it's really the square root of two times 0.25 times 1257. Yeah, 25.1. So omega final, 25.1 radians per second. And anytime I want to go from angular velocity to actual velocity, what do we multiply by? R omega. So I'm going to take 0 0.35 meters times 25.1. Eight point seven nine meters per second. Is any of this math sorry, is any of the math here hard? No. Are we confident at picking the right equation now? Yeah, so where do we tend to trip up? This part, listing all the variables and getting the right units. That's the number one thing for you all to practice. But don't skip that step on the test. Okay, a lot of times I feel like we just go, okay, I think it's this equation, start plugging stuff in. 
write this stuff down first. That's going to eliminate, I want to say, like 80% of mistakes kids tend to make. If you write this part down first, then your, your framework, your base is set up, and now it's much easier to go from there. So list what you're given, okay? And now we got some of these. Let's do uh, two or three. Middle or top? Or sorry, middle or bottom? Middle? Cool. Box one is 15 centimeters to the left. I'm just going to label it as I go. 15. Box two is a mass of 350, so we got 350 grams, and it's 18 away. And box three is also 350, but is 67 away. What must the mass of box one be? Well, we're setting this side equal to this side. Again, this one wants it to rotate this way about this pivot point right here. These two want it to go this way, so these are clockwise, and this one is counterclockwise. So we're just going to get our total. So we've got 15 is our radius times the mass, and that's got to be equal to 18 is our radius times 350 on this one. Plus, since it's going the same way, 67 is the radius times 350 on that one. I'd add that whole side up. 18 times 350 plus 67 times 350. And then I would divide it by 15. And that's a big old number. We would need the mass to be 190 or 1,983. That's going to be grams for 1.983 kilograms. Y'all feel good about these ones? We've been doing it for the warm-ups for the past couple days. Should be easy money on the test. And then lastly, we got the angle ones. Okay, so when we're doing our torque, we're now looking at the RF cosine theta or RF sine theta to determine which one's which. Well, where do I push this? Let's think of this as a door. Where do I push it to make it rotate? Which direction? If I push it left, is it going to rotate? If I push it right, is it going to rotate? It's only going to rotate if I push it up or down, or if my force has some upwards or downwards component. So this arrow is going down and right, correct? So is the component going right going to help it move at all? No, so we need the downward component. When I draw it right here, that's just to make it easy to visualize which triangle to use. Where is that force actually being applied? Right here. It's like it's being pushed down and to the right just like this at the same time. So that's the forces actually being applied. Down and right means down and right at that particular point. But here, I can see, is this side opposite or adjacent this angle right here? Opposite. So what does that mean? We are going to use sine. So what is my radius? 0 0.75 meters times my force, which is 340. And then with that, we said we're going to use sine because it was opposite and the angle was 30 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree. degree. And how do you know it's degrees? Because it's degrees right here. It gives you degrees. So we get 127.5, that's going to be newtons times meters. Okay, don't forget the unit is newtons times meters. And what else do we have to answer on this one? Right here, don't forget this on the, on the test. What is the direction of the torque? So that's clockwise or counterclockwise. So which way is this arrow pushing on it? down, which is going to make this want to rotate this way, which is clockwise. All you got to do is circle on the test. That should be 
free points. Okay. We'll do one more on the back. Which one y'all want? Top or bottom? Cool. Go ahead, try it. Riley, you got it. I draw my triangle right here. Is this opposite or adjacent? Opposite. So what is my radius? 70, so 0 0.7, because we got to put it in meters this time, times 750. We said opposite, so it is sine and 64. I got 472. What's our unit? Newtons times meters. Uh huh. Um, I just been sticking to about three sig figs on stuff. So I kept one, two, three. Looked there, rounded it up. Again, not a nitpicky jerk. Just a jerk. Not too much. I'm looking for about three. If you give me four, okay. If you give me one, that's not sufficient. If you just said, yeah, this is 500, that's not good enough. Is 470 going to make a big difference between 470 and 472? No, but it does seem a little silly not to do it. So there you go. And what do we got to say? It is going which way? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Make it rotate that way. Boom. There you go.